Well, we'd like to give you all a very warm welcome once again to our midweek meeting here in the Cunningham Memorial Presbyterian Church in Cullibaggy. We thank you for joining with us and we trust as we meet around the Word of God this evening that the God of heaven and the God of earth would come and would speak to us. We continue our studies in the book of Job and tonight we turn to the last chapter and as always we must come before the Lord to seek his help that we might understand his word and that his spirit might apply that word to our hearts and to our lives. So let us come before him in prayer. Let us all pray. Our gracious God and loving heavenly Father, you are the great God of the heavens and the earth. And before you we come and in your presence we bow. We bow before you to acknowledge that you are our maker and our God. We bow before you to acknowledge every single day and every single minute of every day. We depend upon your grace. We depend upon your mercy. Were it not for your grace and were it not for your mercy, we would be without hope. And so we bless you, our Father, for that grace and for that mercy. But we thank you also that in your mercy and in your grace you have given to us your word. That word which is literally breathed out of your very mouth. So that as we turn to it, as we study it, as we reflect upon it, we do not listen to the writings of mere men. We do not listen to the words of people. But rather, our Father, we listen to you as you speak to us through those sacred pages. Tonight, therefore, we come. We understand that this is so. And we pray as we read that word tonight and as we study that word tonight you would open up our eyes to see what we need to see we pray to you our father for those this evening who are in need who need a touch from your great hand we pray tonight they would know that touch we pray to you that you would forgive us for our many sins and for our many transgressions Every day that we live, we sin against you far more than we care to admit. Would you forgive us, our Father, this day for the sake of your dear Son and wash us clean in his precious blood. For it's in the sea of yours name we ask. Amen. Well, as we said at the beginning, we come this evening and for the next number of weeks to look at the final chapter of the book of Job. We turn to Job chapter 42 and verses 1 to 6 and the title of our study this evening is God Brings Job to Heal. God Brings Job to Heal. Job chapter 42 verses 1 to 6 let us hear the word of God. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. I will question you and you make it known to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Amen. And we trust God will read, bless this reading from his word. God brings Job to heal. What happens when the sun shines? 
Well, you know and I know if we watch nature all around us, when the sun shines, especially at this time of the year, it brings life. Just over the last few days, I have noticed the white thorn coming into blossom and beginning to bloom with radiance and with splendour. And it's lovely to see, but it hasn't blossomed until now because we have had so little sun. And because we've had so little sun, we've had so little warmth. So as the sun shines upon the land, upon the hedges, upon the trees, everything begins to blossom and come to life. But also surely when the summer sun rises into the sky, we understand not only does it heat the ground, not only does it heat our houses, but as it pours in through the windows, it can fade the carpet. It can fade the sofa, it can fade the wood, it can fade the paint, it can fade whatever it falls upon. In one sense it brings life, but in another sense the sun can do damage. It can break down and it can destroy. The main point surely is this. Whenever the sun shines, Something, whether for good or for ill, takes place. When the sun shines, something inevitably happens. And we need to understand the same is true for the one true and living God. When he reveals himself, when he speaks, when he shows his hand when he reveals something of himself something always always happen let us look then at these verses from Job chapter 42 and the first truth we need to establish is that God reveals himself to his servant Job God reveals himself to his servant Job. What do we read in Job chapter 42? I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Job 42 and verse 5. Job testifies to the fact that in the past, he had heard God speak. But God the Lord has gone one step further with Job. He has shown something of his being to his servant Job. What did we read in Job chapter 38 and verse 1? The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, some commentators believe this is merely figurative language referring to the rough and to the stormy times through which Job was forced to live. Some believe that's how we are to look at this. But since Job says in Job 42 and verse 5, But now my eyes see you, it cannot merely be figurative language when God there in 38 speaks out of the whirlwind, out of the storm, out of the tempest. Rather, it would seem Job's experience of God was very similar to the experience of Moses. When God spoke to him, when God met him, when God revealed something of his glory and something of his majesty to Moses. What do we read in Exodus chapter 3? And verses 4 to 6. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see that as Moses, God called him out of the bush. Moses, Moses. And he said that as Moses said, here am I. Then God said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place in which you are standing is 
holy ground. And he said that as God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look. He was afraid to look at God. God revealed something of his physical glory to Moses. And he speaks to Moses out of this bush. And the reaction of Moses is to hide his face from the presence of God. And it would seem then in a similar vein this time. Out of a storm, out of a tempest, out of the whirlwind, not out of a bush, but out of such God not only speaks but reveals to Job something of his physical glory. This is surely, this must be what Job is getting at when he says in verse 5 of 42, I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Now there's no doubt if you've ever been caught up or experienced a terrible storm. I don't just mean a little bit of wind and a little bit of rain and 60 mile an hour winds, but I mean a terrible storm. That storm will have made an impact, an impression upon you. Maybe you can look back in your life and you can think of some of those natural events, some of those terrible storms that have in the past visited our province. And then if you remember, for instance, the millennium and the great wind that roared in the sky one of those evenings around the, the millennium. I can remember going out of the house and looking up into the air and it was as if there was a, a constant roar of a jumbo jet for hours and for hours and for hours as that ferocious winter wind swept throughout our land, caused chimneys to collapse, trees to be uprooted, did so much damage. I can remember that window, it's 21 years ago now, the noise of it, the roar of it. Or on another occasion, whilst holidaying up in Bushmills, there was a thunder and a lightning storm. It must have been in the 1990s. And we were heading out of Bush Mills, out towards the little village of Billy. And there was a clap of thunder. And you would have thought it had hit the car itself. The car shook. And I remember one of the girls saying, Are we still alive? Are we dead? Such experiences we can surely remember. And it makes you think on the Psalms. When the psalmist says, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. If you have ever experienced the might and the power of nature, it will make an impression upon you. And if you have eyes to see at all, it will make you realize there is a power on high greater than you and greater than me. No doubt as we read Job chapter 38 and verse 1. It must have been an impressive whirlwind, an impressive tempest. But for Job, for God's servant, it was more than a fool has said in his heart that there is no God moment. No, no, it was more than that. Because Job in the whirlwind saw something of Almighty God. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. So God reveals himself in a very significant way to Job. But what impact then? 
What impact did this have on Job? And as we ask this of Job, we must surely try to put ourselves in his shoes. Think of what it must have been like to live through the times that he was living. To be confronted with a great whirlwind, with a great storm, and to see and to hear something of God in that whirlwind. And in that storm, what impact did it have on Job? Well, it causes Job to realise the greatness of God. Chapter 42 and verse 2, he says as he responds to what God has said and revealed about himself, Job says, I know that you can do all things. He sees the greatness of of Almighty God. God has spoken and explained how things really are, and He has left Job in no doubt that He, the living God, can do all things. And in that sense, the living God is so different to Job. And in that sense, the Lord God is so different to you and to me. He can do all things, but we can't. On occasions, I have heard some Christians say, when we are in Christ, we can do all things. And they quote the Apostle Paul who says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Such a verse, my friends, is all about living out the Christian life. Staying the course, not giving up, not giving in, facing a fear of this one, that one or wherever, facing a fear of the future, facing a, a, a fear in relation to your health or whatever. That's what that verse is in relation to. The truth is we can only do all things through Christ if God wills it. God will in the end determine what we can do and what we cannot do. And that is a big difference between us and the living God. God can literally do all things because he holds all the cards, because he holds all the keys, because he is in charge and there is nothing and no one more powerful or influential than him even time itself the time before which all of us must bow even time itself cannot limit our God because he made it he created it he started that clock ticking at the beginning of time and at the end of time he will stop it ticking. Job realises, unlike him, God is able to do all things. But then also Job further understands that what God wills takes place. What God wills happens. Chapter 42, verse 2. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours, no purpose of yours, says Job, can be thwarted. Job is perhaps thinking how things once were with him. He was a very, very successful businessman. He had no doubt plans for the future. He looked to his children and without doubt it was his hope, it was his intention, it was his plan that his children would carry on his business. Those were his long-term goals and his long-term plans. But in a very short time, those plans were thwarted 
Those plans came to nothing. As that great wind blew and collapsed the house and his family were no more. Because Job was human, like you and like me. His plans were thwarted because Job was human. His plans did not take place. But the Lord, he understands now, is so very different. Job now can see this. Job now can realise this. No plan of the living God can ever be stopped. And that means, and let's be blunt about this, that means what happened to Job. And this is where he's at now in his thinking. This is how his thinking has developed. That means what happened to Job. All of it. The good, the bad and the ugly. All of it was part and parcel of God's huge plan for his life. Sometimes Christians don't seem to realise that today. But Job had to see this. And Job, if he's going to move on, had to accept this truth. Up to now on occasions, he's hemmed and he's had and he's tried to duck for cover and tried not to face this huge truth. But now, God has brought him to heal. He sees things as they are. Because he sees God as God is. As yet, he does not understand why things have happened the way that they have happened. Up to now, we, we realise that it has all seemed a little bit cruel to him. Now, despite his better judgment, we might say, he sees a hand of God in it all. He's no longer in rebellion. He's no longer kicking against the pricks as Saul on the road to Damascus was doing. But now he proclaims. No purpose of yours, no purpose of the living God can be thwarted. Far too many Christian people seem to lack peace and contentment. And to try to find this peace and contentment, they will go to many places and listen to some very strange views, either in person or online. Years ago I remember a, a minister saying how in his life there was a time spiritually when he, even though he was a, a preacher of the gospel, was all over the place. He was really, really struggling. He attended some very extreme, what he called charismatic meetings and listened and tried their solutions. And he tried those solutions with all of his heart to find the peace and to find the contentment that he longed for, that he read about in the scripture. He began to believe what he had been taught and what he as a minister had preached was not true to the word of God and in point of fact was damaging to the church of Christ. After some time however in those different circles the discontent returned to his heart, to his mind to his soul until he began to read about and to reflect upon the sovereignty of Almighty God over the good, over the bad, and over the ugly. 
To some degree he confessed his confusion and his discontent made him physically and mentally ill and unstable to a degree like God's servant Job. But it was his testimony that very much like Job, it was only when he accepted, not just in his mind, if you like, but in his heart and in his mind, only when he accepted the sovereign rule of God over all, that he spiritually recover it. And if you're listening tonight and you're a Christian, you can look here and there. If you are not content, you can talk to this one, you can talk to that one. And this one will offer you that solution, this one, other one will offer you the other solution. But you know what? From what we read here, you will never really be content. You will never really be truthfully happy. You will never know the peace of God unless and until you accept as Job Accept it. The sovereignty of God over all. Says Job, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. God, through revealing himself, to Job brings Job to he. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we do thank you in this confusing world that your word doesn't confuse us, but your word shows and reveals the truth. And we come before you this evening and we bless you most especially that you are the sovereign God of the heavens and the earth. That no purpose of yours can be thwarted. And that you can do all things. May we meditate. May we reflect. May we grasp. And may we receive this truth. With trusting fear that we might truly know your peace. That peace which the world, though it tries so hard, cannot give. And that peace which the world, though it tries so hard, cannot take away from those who know you and who accept you for who you are. So bless us, we pray, as a result of our study this evening and continue to lead and to guide and to bless in the days ahead. For it's in the Saviour's name we ask it. Amen.